Hi everyone. Um, my name is Rune. I'm 31 and from Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, and yeah, welcome. <laughs> uh, this is my first time doing this, so don't blame me. <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you today just a little bit about um, how I work in Ableton and how you can work easy in Ableton. Maybe I can give you some tips and tricks and stuff, I hope. Um, so yeah, let's get down to it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, real quick, I was raised in a not so fortunate part of Copenhagen at the time, but it's better now. I don't live there anywhere now. Uh, I've moved away, but um, I mean, we didn't have had much, but both my parents played music, uh, both played punk music. So maybe it's a little bit <laughs> genetic, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but they have always been loving and supporting, and I am so grateful for that because I know there's so many people out there struggling with the whole thing that you need a normal job and stuff like that. So that was just real quick about that. And yeah, um, I usually play, I love DJing, but uh, live sets is the thing I love doing the most because it's it's there's no limits you can just do whatever you feel like um so it's 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 way more versatile and and you have everything you need you really just need to trust your hardware or your DAW if you're using that there's it, it doesn't really matter as long as you have the uh, what's it called when you can just you can just play around when you feel like you can just play around that's when you'll get most out of the live sets in my opinion <laughs> um so yeah i was also very fucking sick at one point sorry for my language <laughs> was very sick in one point. Um, I'm kind of still recovering and I did not listen to my body. I did not listen to my doctors and I was just kind of scared. So I was just thinking, okay, I'm just gonna play as long as I can and play as many gigs as I can while uh, I still have time, but uh, yeah, I made it, so no worries about that anymore. And so, yeah, uh, very weird. I got, I don't think highly of myself um, in any ways. I don't, like, there's no one better than another person, in my opinion. Um, so when I got nominated for the uh, uh, best Danish electronic release of the year, um, I was very like humble, of course, and but it also gave me that 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 um, kind of thought that okay, if I really can do this sitting just in in my bedroom at the time making music and getting nominated for yeah all the stuff and releasing records and get out to play just by making music in my bedroom and if i can do it anybody can do it trust me anybody can do it if i can do it so yeah <laughs> those a little bit quick about that and this is just uh, a picture from uh, a party in Copenhagen called Endurance. Amazing parties. Um, you can be yourself. Don't have to worry about anything or how people think of you. 
Like you can be however you want to be. And that's amazing. And that's, I think that's, that was the last time I played a DJ set, I think. Uh, yeah, that and Bassiani in, in Georgia. And then I came right back home and it was COVID chaos. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but uh, thank you for listening. And um, I'm going to show you a bit of tips and tricks in, in Ableton. Uh, I'm going to start by showing you uh, a project I'm currently working on. And then after that, I'm going to make uh, a, a, a new project and just show you through the, I don't know, the basics in a way. So, yeah. Let's uh, let's get going. So, do, 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 do. let me just move this a little bit so I can go back to the beginning. Okay, so I work like this. Um, I love using the, the 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 drum kits that they do have in Ableton, especially in the new ones. There's a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> Um, and don't ever be afraid to try random stuff out. Like, I've, uh, <laughs> right now I'm on this um, thing that I really love, like beat repeats, as you can see. <laughs> and if you just work with it in the right way, you can really get some unique drum patterns or just patterns in in, in generally out of it so that's a little secret i would recommend a lot um so yeah this is a drum sample i got from my friend uh isaac uh also known as ironside amazing guy um so i'm just just gonna start play this from the track and you can kind of see the the build up uh on um, the whole thing and stuff so yeah beginning of one of my tracks and new tracks so yeah as you can see i'm a little bit messy <laughs> so, um but yeah i mean you can do so many things for example i can just try to play this hi-hat thing um so now i double i double timed it okay so it's actually now how i recorded it But uh, yeah, so I love playing around <laughs> as I said. So uh, I really, I really started to love just, yeah, like hi hats, for example. Um, if you just have time, then you get a weird, crispy LA time style, but I really enjoy it. I don't know about anybody else. And this is yeah, clap snip.
And there's so many options in the in Ableton, like the, the presets and stuff. It's yeah, uh, I don't have any complaints. Uh, I'm using um, I'm used to work with hardware. Um, I used to work with hardware only actually. Um, but since I got the new Ableton, there's so many possibilities all of a sudden that I'm, I love doing like half, half or just what I feel like. Sometimes it's just only digital and sometimes it's only hardware. I, I really don't have any preferences anymore because it's, you can do everything in a DAW that you can do on the world's most advanced sequencer. So also if you don't have uh, a ton of money to spend on hardware, because that is very expensive, uh, I would recommend just get Ableton and play around with the uh, sounds inside. So I'm just gonna like this just for fun um this is just like some little clips and i'm gonna take a basic drum thing so uh, the boring man not really punch you can always change that up the weird and take this one. I have an OAM kit. Sounds weird, so let's try that. Um so you have like your little mini clip, let's make it a bit bigger, just in case. So you have everything. <laughs> so we can start with uh, easy pattern type of thing and this just yeah work a bit with it on the kick in the top one so it's maybe a little bit uh, what you call it like rumbly <laughs> say like a little bit more uh so it's not so a little bit more like up and down on the velocity on the, the high um, so i'll do this and then i just randomly completely randomly you can see here i have the drawing pen and i can draw like Yeah, let's see how oh, that sounds. It gives a little bit more movement 
uh, in my opinion. So I really like doing that. And also, of course, you have everything in the kit here. The shakers, everything. You have everything and you can process everything both uh like um like before the as you do it as a kid and you you can do it uh separately too so like each individual uh, hi-hat kick percussion whatever you can do whatever you want with it so for example let me just just gonna try some of the deep repeat I was uh, talking about uh, just gonna put it on should try put it on the kicks and see how that works out maybe start to mute so I'm just gonna deactivate these notes so they don't play Um, so yeah. Um, audio effects, you have everything you need here. And I mean everything. Like you can't complain about the reverb and everything because I mean, it does what it has to do and it's built in the, in the program. And I mean, there is, it's not the same as, I don't know, an even tight uh, <laughs> a reverb, but I mean, it's, it's still good and you can still work with it. So, I mean, it's very important not to let those things get you down, that you don't have one of those things you really want to, because <laughs> it's never gonna stop, trust me um so yeah let's take the beat repeat and um let's put it on should we put it on the percussion or no let's do it on the kick just for fun so i don't put it out here because that's like after the whole drum kit uh processing so I just put it only on the kick and there's a little bit of difference already there and you can just oh, <laughs> you can add to it and add to it and add to it uh, as much as you want so let's Say we just put it on the on the only on the kick. So let's see if we put it on just the whole thing maybe afterwards. And I always do this thing when I use beat repeats uh, on my kick drums. I compress it with a brick wall after my the beat repeat. Because otherwise you get these these like and then it just pops up the DB like with two or four or whatever. So it's just to keep it on the same level. Let's 
now you already have like a weird rhythmy. And then, and yeah. So let's check out just some of the random sounds that maybe sounds like nothing, but you can do a lot with also. Uh, I really don't use these often. So, um, don't judge me if it sounds like shit or something. Um, okay, so let's try this thing out. Um, also, um, a quick little tip um, in new Ableton, then you just have like to use M and then you have the, the you can see the MIDI. It pops up and you have the automation mode, which I'll show you after. Sorry about that. And also, arpeggiators is not a bad thing either. I mean, if we just need to try out something fun fast. Oh, it's, oh, oh sorry. It's under the video. Yes. And always put it before <laughs> the instrument, of course. So let's just see if. So uh, just one one note it and see what happens. And we can always change everything. That's the lovely thing about DAWs. Just the equalizing, I think, it really needs. Uh, to be honest, <laughs> and you can see here it's like this peak, and we do not like that. And we can all let me show you one of my one of my favorite uh, plugins. That's not in Ableton. So it is uh, native instruments. And then you just get in the contact in and you have oh this is the only ones I pretty much use. Um this is yeah the only ones I use. So let's just try out the straight light because that is just amazing by itself. Okay, so let's just go on the keys. Let's see what we have. If you wanna use keys, there's also maybe we can look at pads because yeah, that's always nice. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pick a random, let's pick a random, majestic scene, whatever. Okay, so. Only using just my keyboard now as as you can see <laughs> um, as keys because I don't really have gear at home anymore. Um, 
So yeah, let's. I think I like to just do like this, play randomly and see what happens. So just in the past. <laughs> mm -hmm. also, if you don't want to listen to that annoying sound all the time, you can just turn the little cue. So we can just leave this part for fun. Put them in its right place. <laughs> mm -hmm. Never be afraid to add effects also to equalize. Don't be afraid of that ever. <laughs> so yeah, let's put some echo on and see what it says. I always turn the dry wet down because it's always up way too, way too much, uh, in my opinion. But I do love feedback, <laughs> I gotta say. So let's try it out. See how it sounds with the with the sixteenth. Um, that's hmm. Melt it in some reverb, drown it in reverb. So I'm just gonna try with the drum drum. No, just <laughs> So we can also just ignore everything I've done down here and make a like a what four by four type of techno thing because <laughs> it did have yeah.
also uh, yeah, good tip. Um, if you want to use, if you don't want to sit and click on it, you can just use the the drawing mode, which you do by disabling your MIDI keyboard with an M, and then press B when you have it here. Let's layer these two and see if they're like oh, oh, that's not good. I don't know. No. Okay, so I'm just gonna only use this for kick right now, I think. And this just put on a traditional, everybody, everyone knows the classic 909 sounds. Uh, that's... So, cut paste, like I always do. <laughs> Again, do the velocity. And let's just put in these while we're at it, because we don't have a whole day. <laughs> Quick trick <laughs> if you need a heavy bass line or something. It's, I really enjoy just doing, I'm using this, what is it called? A hip hop sub bass or something. But I mean, yeah, there it is. It does the trick. Okay, so now we have a quick baseline and let's see how it sounds. Sounds, I mean, like techno. <laughs> so. Let's try to put something dark-ish in it. <laughs> so again, I go to the, the plugins I wanted to show you. And I have my baby thrill here, because that is, I mean, you can, you can make 10,000 horror movies. 
the soundtracks with with this plugin alone. Um, and I really enjoy the type of sounds. So let's just come and let's see what we have. Let's should we try something random? Human fear. That is we all know that. <laughs> So let's try that one out in that index. So this is like really good for soundscapes and eerie techno stuff. <laughs> Let's try to put that in. And in Thrill, I don't really use notes at all because on most of the things, it kind of doesn't really matter because it just modulates and you play around with the x, y axis uh, as long as you want. So I'm just going to put it up to yeah, how much a minute is. <laughs> Let's try. Yeah, a quick, dark, and broody type of thing, I think we'll call it. Um, so we can maybe try to um, go back to what I was doing before, actually, and maybe show you uh, maybe just another set, actually. Uh, another project just to yeah show that there is a bit of a difference <laughs> so yeah, it's just gonna so this So that's also one of the, I mostly do this type of stuff, that's type of techno at the moment. Because I don't know, it's just what speaks to me at the moment.
Uh, I actually also a good trick. Um, if you have already made like your whole mix and it sounds like you want it to be um, at the peak levels before you turn everything down for the, so it doesn't clip or pre masters or whatever, I use the same kick pattern as I as that's playing, but I just use it as side chain only because then you get the same feel. Yeah. I really enjoy that. <laughs> This is the drums. Uh, I don't know. And this was the kick. Oh. Um, so let's just try this. Oh, you can you can hear that like, um, the hi hats are very predominant, and the drums is kind of stuck. So again, compress and then break wall because break wall is it's a kick saber in some ways. I mean, you can obviously over compress stuff, but that's not really what you want to do. Um, but it really works if you have something like that. Let's give it a try and see how it works for this pattern. <laughs> gives a lot of punch on kicks and stuff like that, but it's, um, I would say it's, um, you can, especially with the side chain thing, it can be very quick, like way too much, way too fast, and you lose the, the small gaps that gives the, the track to breathe uh, in a way. So that's also a, a bit to, to check out on and just to make sure that you don't overuse it because that's also the last thing you want to do. <laughs> no. Yeah. And I mean, we can. There's also the how does it sound in half? Okay, it sounds not good. Um, so, also, what I really like to do to create um, not the same melody throughout the track, but in a way, it's, it still is because, because yeah, I have my melodies and I 
let me see if I have the new. Yeah, so here's the the notes that I used for for recording these. So I always try to keep it kind of on on, uh, on the same keys and stuff. And uh, a quick <laughs> trick uh, also is if you have something that really works, you can. There's no problem. You can duplicate it, uh, the MIDI clip, and see. Let's take this for example. I don't know where it is now, but let's just try. Okay, so let's we have that. Um, let's say we want the same harmony, but maybe a pad or a different type of thing. I just duplicate, cut, and paste. And I go to a sound like what you put on, like a choir pad thing, maybe. Um, spacious we're probably gonna need some reverb and stuff but let's try it out <laughs> still so, i mean i don't know if it's cheating Maybe it is a little bit. Let's call it cheat trick, like you had <laughs> in 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 the old PlayStation games and computer games and stuff, and and that really works. Uh, obviously, if you put too many layers of the same melody or the same notes in a pad or or, or stuff like that, you're gonna it's gonna to be too much, so it's it's very fine balance from where to not overdo it and also not I don't know underdo it if if, if that's the word. Uh, so yeah. Um, is, was there anything else I wanted to show you guys and girls and whatever you identify as? Uh, I think the most of the stuff in here is. I mean, it's it's basically what I've been showing you. I mean, there's a lot of uh, extra processing. But that's all up to you. As I said, nothing in these audio effects uh, is undoable if you put it in. So always, I mean, never be afraid to try out, to just try random weird stuff. Cause I mean, a lot of the times that's, that's when the good stuff happens. <laughs> it's when you just try random things out. So, yeah, uh, I would really recommend just playing around with that. Um, so, yeah, uh, so, this, so I'm just going to answer some Q&As um, for you guys now. Um, yeah, my mastering chain. Um, that is also a bit of uh, like a cheat trick I use when I when I um, I'm making a track that's I want to try out playing, um, and I don't, I don't want it to clip because that really works in my opinion. Um, and it's it's actually a uh, a pre uh, master thing. It's up in here in your audio effect rack and mixing mastering. 
and then you have the uh, full chain master here. So, um, also a little thing with that, just <laughs> to, 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 uh, to keep in mind that it's, it always puts like too much uh, base on it. So I always turn that down and try to keep it as equal as possible, but it's basically just to compress it and make sure it does have the big swings if I want to play it out. Um, so I think that's that works really well. And, and I mean, if I can only yeah recommend it for everyone who want to try to play that track out when it's not mastered. Because yeah, it's it works fine, not as final mastering for, for a release, of course. Um, even though I have done it with one solo release, to be honest. Um, but yeah, um, it's pretty much just playing, trying stuff out for playing. Um, why? All techno producers make music in Ableton. That's a hard one, I think. Um, I, I don't think all techno producers do, to be honest. Uh, I think they use whatever feels best for them. Uh, you can also say, like, why do in, in hip hop? Or something a trap or whatever um a lot of people are using like fl studio and stuff like that and the most like hmm, why do they do that but when you look into it a little bit it's every 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 individual uses their own thing but for me it's just that ableton has the best grid um both in in, in, in the clip section, but also in the whole thing it's in itself, actually. Um, yeah, and also in the MIDI clips, if you want to make a new MIDI clip, everything. I, I just really love the grid, and it's easy to, 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 to keep, um, yeah, so, to keep up with you doing so don't get lost in having a uh, hundred tracks that's the same color or looks like the same and you have to like figure out oh what do i have to put when but again it's 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 different from from individual to individual in my opinion um for me i just started out using ableton and I've used it ever since because that's what I started with and that's what I feel most comfortable with. So, yeah, that, and I think maybe that's uh, a thing that that people, a lot of people maybe, they start to use Ableton because it's also one of the most, okay, that's maybe not true, but I think it's one of the most known for uh, um, regular people who want to try stuff out, like myself when I started a long time ago. Um, so yeah, I think it's just that how I feel about Electron, I love Electron. I mean, Octatrack, you can't compare it to anything that is that is kind of able to turn in a box if you do want to sit with a really tiny, teeny tiny small hardware screen and and um, <laughs> scroll buttons all through that. But uh, it, I only I don't have the analog four synthesizer. I only have the Octrack as a sequencer and sampler, and um, my analog rhythm that I'm still waiting for getting fixed. That was, yeah, it, 
fucked uh, a while ago, but I mean, I've had it for since 2016 or thereabout, and I've been traveling with it, playing live sets with it for since I got it. And there's never been a problem with it until I put it out in the studio. So I think it's just a, a random type of thing. Um, but I love using Electron products in my in my productions because there's a lot of people who, um, in a way, hate. Let's say hate on the sound that the arts track have. But I mean, it's also always something you can get around. It's actually kind of easy, quick tip on the arts track if you just want to use it for, for samples and stuff. Keep the volume on it down. And then you can always just boost it on your mixer or wherever. But keep that down because otherwise you can start to get when you it goes up around i think is it 70 or 80 about 80 i would say it distorts and that takes something out of it but it can also add something to it again it's it's kind of what you want out of it but i can only recommend electron products besides um unnecessary unnecessarily expensive um uh, extra external gear like a distortion or whatever so uh if i can get some advice uh Uh, some resources where you could find uh, some news about any residencies or musical competitions and stuff. Um, I don't really know, but I think I would turn to social media, unfortunately. Because um, uh, just for example, I've been off Facebook for a year and a half. I've uh, only logged in a few times and I have missed a lot, but I mean, it also feels really, really nice not to be on social media all the time. Um, but I think that's where you're gonna uh, find the, the, the artist you like. It's like on Facebook and Instagram, SoundCloud, uh, where you can find mixes, uh, and yeah, unreleased stuff by your favorite artists, most of your favorite artists. Um, so, uh, yeah, music magazines is not really a big thing. It, I mean, I think Resident Advisor and MixMag and, and those places, uh, is also some good places to go for news and upcoming events, festivals, uh, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, otherwise I would say probably social media. Unfortunately, scroll through a whole lot of Instagram. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but um, that's, that's how I've seen a lot of people go fast from not uh, not knowing anyone to network real fast. Uh, I'm personally not very good at it at all, but some people are, and I think then you should just do it because I mean, I mean, the worst thing that can happen is somebody saying the word no. <laughs> to you so always keep that in mind also if you want to reach out to somebody an artist or you like or somebody i mean yeah just do reach out 
then say good. Okay, how to how I publish a record from my country. That is pretty much kind of random in a way. Uh, I've only tried once to do like my own record, like from the bottom, everything. And that went to, that didn't win well, and I lost some money off of it. Um, but yeah, that's a whole other thing. Um, but you, I think you just, it's, it's, it's not that hard actually. You just need to, to find a good mastering engineer. Um, here in Denmark, we have uh, Joel uh, from uh, Six Beat Studios, who is the he is the best we have here. And yeah, no matter how shitty my track would sound, I would always <laughs> trust him to make it sound nice. That is for sure. Um, he also did the mastering from my uh, Kislati record. Um, but then I think you just need to find a good mastering engineer and, and talk to the, the present plans. And if you want to try to go big and not just uh, a small uh, three, maybe 100, 300 uh, uh, edition uh, of release on, on Bandcamp or something like that, um, I haven't tried it myself, but reach out to some distributors. Uh, I don't think that they want to turn people down if they see potential in it. And I mean, again, if I can do it and so many other people <laughs> in, in this business can do it, then you can do it too. So just yeah so uh, research on which um, pricing plan is doing the best job uh be patient have a good mastering engineer and try not to overthink about your tracks because that's something i tend to do a lot and it never works out it never does anything good for me to overthink stuff so yeah get a get some a bunch of tracks going uh get a mastering engineer that that you yeah you know is gonna make something sound nice or maybe a mastering engineer that you know and you send it to the present plant uh and just keep in touch with him and within hopefully, I don't know about the waiting time these days because I think it's a bit long, I can imagine with all the releases and stuff, but then you know, okay, in six to eight months, maybe I'll have my record, uh, something like that and always follow the process. If there is um, small uh, 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 discrepancies with there's like a little peak somewhere where it maybe messes up the sound of the record or makes like a type of sound. Um, so always follow the, the process, I would say, for sure. Um, my main influences um, for producing in generally or in techno, um, and generally, I would say, I think everybody from Balls of Canada, Apex Twin, Otegra is one of my favorite uh, groups. Uh, I really love Otegra too. I mean, Chief Keith. <laughs> I mean, if you just listen, it's, you, you can always find some way to, to be uh, inspired by, and there is inspiration in all music, 
it's just maybe you need to 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 find it um, but yeah um, so yeah i think yeah that's and yeah my main influences in techno is without a doubt from the, when I from the beginning when I found techno and stuff, it was Regis and Searching as British Murder Boys, and I don't know if it's the nostalgia thing for me or, but uh, those guys is just they made techno the way I wanted it to sound, and at that point when I found it, I didn't really care to be honest from I came from a punk background um so I didn't really enjoyed uh, a lot of techno at that point to be honest but British murder boys uh really did it, something for me and then I started to sort of like go deeper into it and found downwards and and it just kept rolling rolling <laughs> So I would say Regis and Surgeon. Uh, that's 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 my main uh, my main influences. Maybe also uh, Abdullah Hashim, because I remember when I first bought his first record, which I couldn't. It was just stuck in my head all day. So I think he also made a big diff, uh, influence in, in, in my sound. Um, yeah, I, I play with sound design in Ableton, but I use Max for life for that, mostly. Um, I don't really use Operator much. Um, I honestly don't know why I've used them a few times as um, for bass, um, simple uh, like keys and stuff like that. Um, but I don't really use operative sound designing. I gotta be honest, um, that's more on my on on on. on uh, on my that's blow filth. That's one example um, that I use for for creating my sounds from the bottom. Um, and you can do the same thing, I guess, in an operator. I think I'm actually gonna try that out later. Um, but yeah, I haven't used it a lot, but it's. Yeah, yeah, I can. I guess that could, it's. I mean, it's just sine wave. Uh, it, so I mean, you can always put layers on from there and do your thing. If I have any secret weapons uh, when it comes to producing. Mm -hmm. That's kind of hard. Um, not really. Um, I mean, secret weapons, you yeah, have shown a little bit about the beat repeat uh, stuff that I really enjoy that makes random patterns and stuff without being too, it being too much. Um, but as far as the secret weapons go, I think everybody got to maybe find their own weapon with in, in time. I think that's, yeah, that that's the most important thing because the, that will also, I think, uh, make you, how do you say um, that you have your own sound a bit more in a way 
so when you find your own secret weapon, you find the way to your own sound, completely your own sound, like that. So, and also, again, never be afraid to experiment with doing stuff because nothing's going to hurt from that ever <laughs> at all. So, yeah. Um, so I think that's it for the Q&A. And um, I was, um, I'm hoping this was uh, helpful and you can use some of my tips and tricks uh, to, to, to make what you feel like making and yeah, or maybe for some inspiration or whatever. So, yeah, uh, and also, I mean, don't ever be afraid to reach out. Uh, so, just yeah, do your own thing. Uh, keep experimenting, and never be afraid to, yeah ask around because there's no such thing as a stupid question in music, especially in DAWs. So yeah, I guess that's it um, for me today. And I want to thank you all for wanting to check in and see what I, yeah, I have for you guys. So um, yeah, that's it for me. Uh...